Yo, Paul. Yep, that's me. Hey, good to hear you. Just for context, I uh, first found you on a random Zoom show like uh, two years ago, maybe? Like when COVID mm -hmm. was like really popping off. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and you just did awesome magic comedy. And uh, yeah, I just like to, I think I just added on Facebook then. Uh, just to make sure I didn't forget you. Yeah, I I mean I I do I did oh my god I did so many Zoom shows it it was kind of weird because I went from doing in person stuff to exclusively Zoom and you know it's and hard. It, was, it was kind of a learning curve but once once you figured out the formula that worked for you it made it easier to work uh the crowd yeah i the, and i think it's honestly similar with this thing like this is thank you first of all for doing this is like if you look at the screen too long this like yeah. app is like insanity like the goofy yeah. cartoon thing is like yeah. <laughs> i i do try to stare away from the screen but what I'll do yeah. is essentially I'll just take the audio from this and then place it in a YouTube video and half the screen will be uh, your latest thing. I think April 22nd, you have a thing uh, going yeah. on for Magic Comedy. Uh, yeah. Um, so on the April 22nd, I'm doing Sammy James's show. Um, uh and take your time cool. also i'll i'll clip up like i allow yeah. a lot of spaces for conversations usually so I, yeah. I i will clip this up like as needed and stuff but also a lot of it we could just keep in because it's natural conversational yeah. flow so yeah um uh, i'm doing so sammy james's show uh i think it's april 22nd i, I can't remember but it's called the waiting room. And, awesome! Uh, It'll be on the screen for for the yeah. people that are listening or viewing in the future, near yeah. future. But, um, uh, I, yeah, yeah. It's basically uh, Sammy runs an amazing show where comedians get to talk about uh, their personal experiences with various mental and physical illnesses and how it relates to their comedy and me having autism um i kind of bring sort of like the stand-up comedy and then i do magic along with it and uh it's always a fun show i think i've done it like twice now and uh it's 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 awesome. really fun that sounds awesome i i just uh i've been getting into like deep into the seattle open mic scene yeah uh, especially as of late and there's a there's a dude i think his name is robbie schroeder but he yeah. was at a show last night he just had he was like doing fun crowd work like yeah. uh with the comedians like as a crowd member uh yeah. and he was met he brought up that he was autistic and i actually had no idea um so it's awesome to hear there's like these shows that are actually spreading awareness for that stuff yeah you know, I, go ahead i didn't mean to cut you off oh no you're good i i was just gonna say i consider like i ha i've started to understand that like i could be classified as neurodivergent and so i've yeah. been trying to like actually communicate that to people so that they don't take me the wrong way because yeah. i talk in a monotone voice and like yeah. it can offend people really easily but um uh that's awesome. I think now in this time that we're living is probably the most uh, lenient time for people with disabilities. I mean, we still yeah. have it rough and there's still a lot of a lot of work to be done. But um, I was born in 1983, so I'm a legit child of the 80s and 90s. And things were a lot different back then 
and yeah it's so it's so weird to think that where we started and where we are now we were where we are uh, you know there when i was a kid there was no such so, thing as an yeah. virgin all yeah. people knew is i went to special ed and i i was weird and um that's when the bullying happened and you know no one got in trouble for bullying when i was a kid and that you know, yeah it, it's been, it it it, it made me tough in that yeah. respect but Definitely. it's hard to it's it's really hard to explain to someone i work with a lot of younger people and it's really hard to explain what it was like growing up in the 80s and the 90s i just have them i just tell them watch a show from that time and see how the kids treat each other and then times it by like a hundred <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it was, really was like on 10 yeah. all the time like it yeah. was cla like you would see in the 90s like a cheesy like tv show that was like really playing it up like that's yeah. actually like really how it was yeah it, it was it, pe people were mean they didn't care if you had a disability that was like when you when you um with everything what happened in the election and stuff like that people want mm -hmm. things to go back to like the way they were and the oh, way yeah. it was was just everybody being really mean to, to each other right. everybody just wanted the license to be a jerk so like that's yeah it's it like is. we've actually we've made progress is like what we need to all like yeah. understand and be like okay things might be going back and forth and you know two steps yeah. backward three forward but we are it feels like the world is making a lot of progress with it. it's i've been a substitute uh or a few years back i was like actively substitute teaching so i was yeah. seeing the social emotional learning classes yeah. and i was like what like we didn't have this at all no. growing up so it's so nice that like kids can and go it, see it, the counselor and like yeah, yeah. It just feels like now everybody just wants us to take a huge step back. Everybody's going to have their rights taken away. Everybody, everybody wants it to go back to like 1956, I think. And this is my yes. own personal opinion. And it's like, no, look, we've yeah. come a long way. Look, I, I will say I do love Jimmy Durante. I've been getting into old school like Sinatra style of music so i will say the art back then a lot of it does hold up but um yeah <laughs> anyway but you know the, the you know the thing with the thing with me is is that when i do my autism advocacy when i go into schools and when i do talks at libraries and stuff i'm really trying to get people with autism who have who are neurodivergent i'm trying to get them to I'm trying to show them that you can follow your dreams because I was told a lot when I was younger, it's like, you're not going to be able to do math because it all started with magic for me. Oh, you're yeah. not going to be able to be able to get up in front of a crowd and you're not going to do this and do this. And I'm literally doing shows like two or three shows a week. I'm doing children's awesome. magic shows and I'm doing stand up comedy and I'm performing I might be performing for an elementary school with 900 kids and then I might be in a bar performing for 30 people and yeah. like I do a lot of shows and I'm not trying to brag but I'm just trying to say I was told literally told by a group of doctors and psychologists that I wouldn't be able to do this so it's so it frustrating the, yeah and it, it's and frustrating, it, and it's like, but it's also, yeah, I'll let you, sorry, go well, on. Well, it's actually more frustrating for my aunt. You see, I, I, with the because I have the autism, mm -hmm. I never really took what they said into account. I just basically did it. I just basically did it. But yep. for my aunt who raised me, who knew that I had more skills than what I was presenting, it was frustrating for her because she was like and to this day she was like i knew you could do stuff you could do stuff 
And I was like, yeah. and my stuff means everything that I've accomplished. And that's what I, yeah. that's what I always tell my friends. It's like, do stuff, whatever you uh, do, do it as much as you can, as much as you, you're able to do it. And that's what I, when I go into schools and I tell the kids, do everything that y you want to do now so you don't yeah. have a midlife crisis when you're in your uh, 30s and buy a jet right? and, <laughs> and it's like time spent. I do the same. I've, I harp on that so much with like skill building and like technique yeah. acquisition, whether it's basketball, yeah. like in a phys ed. Uh, class yeah. or something like I'm like honestly there are people that are you know built differently in the brain and different. you know physical form but time spent kind of you know trumps all that I feel like I can't use the word trump anymore because of yeah. our president <laughs> but listen here's, here's the thing about that it, it, it's over it's done we gotta yes. move on and learn from the past what we learn yeah. during this time is people will literally do anything to make other people angry and that's all that was yeah i have a really funny story about that during the the, the first election um Obama was leaving and, you know, it was Trump and Hillary and uh, uh, I, I live in Connecticut and, you know, we're kind of urban, but we're still very like um, small town vibes and it's quaint. We invented fall and um, yeah. and pumpkin spice and uh, nice. and I apologize <laughs> for that. Many times for and, and the cheesy joke the is white women everywhere. Thank you for the pumpkin spice, but I, that's like almost a tagline. <laughs> yeah. Um, and here's the story. Um, I don't know if I'm able to swear or you're going to cut it out, but um, no, you can swear. Okay, so uh, we live in a relatively uh, small town. I like to tell people uh, I live in a town with a bowling alley and that's really all you need to know about me. So we have a bowling <laughs> alley and I'm that guy. And yeah. if you drive down the main drag, there is a series of houses and on one house it says F Biden. And then the next yeah. house it says F Trump. And then on the uh, uh, the next house down, it says uh, uh, F Biden. And then the last house, it said F Brian. <laughs> and I said Wait. to myself, I don't care about Trump or Biden anymore. I want to know who Brian is and what he did to piss his neighbors off. Right. <laughs> There's you know, a larger because, message there. Yeah, because yeah. it, like, it was like F Biden. Uh, Confederate flag, uh, uh, yeah. F Trump, uh, LBG, uh, LBTQ plus flag. And then there was yeah. another Trump one. And then there was a thing that said, fuck you, Brian. And I, I, I just want to <laughs> know, I just want to know what Brian, what Brian did. Brian <laughs> did. did he like borrow someone's hose or like, is he like, or, or if, I mean, if if Brian put that up just to make his friends laugh, because I hope that's what it is. Yeah, because it's like to this day, that's the only thing I took away from that election is I really want to know that story. I want to know Brian's story. I want to know because he might be a hero or a villain, but we'll never know because those those flags are still up. By the way, uh, they're just they're <laughs> old. There's like a lesson in like staying under the radar because yeah. the the general population yeah. is not saying fuck Brian, but the general population is always saying fuck. And then the yeah. variable is, you know, political yeah. person. And it, and it, and it's like um that you know, it's like I tend not to I like I never I see I was never good at political humor. 
uh, some people are really good at that kind of humor. Not that I don't have opinions and not that because I live in Connecticut and it's it's a blue state and mm -hmm. I was raised in a gay household. And, you know, sometimes when I watch the news and I'm like, why are they taking why are they doing this and why are they doing that? And I realize that. I might be alive for the next 30 years of my life because I'm 40 and it's really not going to make a difference. You know, I wanted to go to the yeah. moon as a kid and that's not going to happen. The best I can do is I went to 7-Eleven when I was a kid and I, I'm, I, I'm okay with that. <laughs> they told me, they told me, it's like, Paul, you could do whatever you want as a kid. And it's like, these are the same people telling me that I wouldn't be able to do uh, magic shows for people. So, you know, that was a weird, that was weird. Having a bunch of people who and psychologists, it's like, oh, Paul, my teachers, you can be president. And I was like, no, I had a group of people tell me that I I, I couldn't be uh, president. They literally told me that I couldn't do it. And that I, my <laughs> yeah, that's it's ridiculous. It's like that weird juxtaposition where I had a group of people telling me it's like, go out there go out there and become president and then the other then people it's like yeah no you, you you're probably just going to be a janitor i yeah. i had literally the literally uh you, you said you're in uh school is that every kid has an iep and because i was in special yes. ed they had a special special thing and they're like we can get him a job as a janitor at a hospital but he wants to go to college yeah he's we're gonna you might want to have them work at this hospital and i'm kind of sad because i would be making like 35 dollars an hour with a 401k and insurance but, yeah you know, i don't listen to people so that's my fault that's my bad I is individual uh, education plan or something similar yeah. right it's yeah. where one one of the best examples uh teaching was uh i t i filled in for this guy who didn't realize there was a student in a certain period that needed a microphone in the class because that's yeah. a new tactic is like yeah. uh to you know you can't have shout or expect the teacher to yell at the top of their lungs while kids are talking over so like there needs to be a microphone in the classroom yeah. sometimes and like it's not that literally that's like i'm seeing these gaps and still yeah they're there but they're at least less than you know in yeah, the 90s there it's i like to call it slow progress because um this is gonna sound like it doesn't uh apply but i've been working at a movie theater for the past uh 21 years and you also first started, sorry to interrupt but you bowled a 299 and i want to get back to that at some point i think i read yeah. that at a glance recently but back to what yeah. you're saying I, I like bowling and uh so i work at a movie theater part-time when i'm not doing magic shows or i'm doing uh other other paul related activities and um, Paul Mart, yeah yeah and uh the um uh we have um the assist we had a, we have a, a assisted uh we we have uh devices that allow you to read it's your like very own closed captioning system. We have all these systems in place uh, mm -hmm. for hearing, uh, for uh, hearing the hearing impaired and stuff like that. And we have all the, the comp our company spends lots of money on that. And it's like, we're a movie theater and we have the ability to give people things to watch the film. And I hear some of my friends with kids who have to literally sue the school that their kids are going to just to get like a special specialized like um aid for their child and that's why i do my uh autism advocate adv advocacy it's just yeah. like we're a movie theater and we can give you a device that'll help you uh watch your movie but then you take your kid to school and then nope you can't get special training for that you're gonna have to go ahead and sue us and then then we'll get and i'm like so there's still a little ways to go. There, there's there's still a little ways to go when you can get more aid at a movie theater than uh, you can Definitely. get for your child. <laughs> Definitely. That's like, 
Although I guess movie that would be a great low key spot to like get support if your movie theater offered that on the side. But I I've seen it in school administration where it's just shocking. Like a lot of the, okay, a lot of school administration is fantastic, and a lot of teachers are amazing. And you see the anxiety in the eyes of the teachers that have bad administration where like they're putting everything they can into the job and there's just no no like normal like discipline's a harsh word harsh sounding word yeah. but like just consequences for actions discussions like yeah. normal so all the sel stuff all the social emotional learning yeah. uh, stuff that i picked up teaching like it's it's weird to sit down because you're not supposed to talk to administration if you're in school uh in the school profession uh, unless you have your union rep there and that's for a very good reason uh let me just talk to i'm on uh there's a physical person talking to me hey, I, have to ask, I have to ask you to move it's no stop no yeah no worries seven so yeah i'm just on a call right yeah thank you i was doing the classic thing of uh I got a parking spot in downtown. I just picked up flowers for the lady. And, uh, uh, I did I did the old stop in front of the sign that is a load unload. Um and then pretend you're uh neurodivergent or actually be neurodivergent, you know. But that was a very kind interaction from the officer yeah, there. Uh, Let's end this here actually and we can pick up for part two. Because that's actually a good amount of time. Yeah, sure. Um, but this was awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time. And I yeah. will uh, I'll help you promote uh, going forward for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, please leave that last part in because it's hilarious. And. Oh, I will. <laughs> it's, uh, it's funnier when it's like a uh, Karen. I've had it happen at like, because I put. What will happen uh, is if don't get too deep into this app because you could just talk forever. Yeah. Probably like I, I like I've had way too long a conversations yeah. on here, but like when you do that and then, oops, I've been parked in a spot for 45 minutes or whatever. Yeah. Like there are so much, especially in Seattle, the passive aggressiveness is insane. So you get these like death stares from the, you know, Karens of the world or whatever. Yeah. Uh, you know, and before, oh, sorry. This is the bumpy spot. Yeah, I'll I'll end on this. Uh, I think everyone has a tiny little Karen that lives inside them. Everybody's sure. different, and everybody has a little trigger. Mine's when I go to McDonald's and they forget my straw, and that's when my Karen uh, uh, manifests. No one starts out as a Karen. Uh, everyone has a little one living in them. Can you repeat when yours manifests? Because I I just pulled over on a spot, uh, and I have my yeah. brain went somewhere else with Karen. So basically, everybody has a little Karen that lives inside of them, and it's triggered. Everyone's different, and mine is is when you're at McDonald's. And they give you your food and you, you drive away and they forgot your straw. And now you have to <laughs> take the lid off and you got to drink it like an animal. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what triggers me. They're taking um, away your dignity. Yeah. Your straw, your straw dignity. And you have, and then if you stop fast, then you got high C orange, uh, fruit drink all over your car and just because someone <laughs> forgot to put a straw in a bag and it's, this sounds like a, a very real very real lived experience yeah <laughs> it's like when you got werther's originals for trick-or-treat candy that's just lazy you know what i mean there's <laughs> yeah it's like i like that, that one lady who gives was, out I was, fruits i was a werther's fan honestly yeah. as, a, as a child yeah. the marketing so, always confused me though they were always showing old people in the the commercials and i'm like but i like this too if but with the straw to die what's up if you're about to die give your grandkids these candies right <laughs>
<laughs> that seemed to be the strategy, the brand strategy for Werther's back then. They're in the will. It'll be fine. <laughs> With straws, though, I think Wendy's yeah. is the only place I want them to leave the straw out because yeah. I hate paper straws so much. Like uh, paper, paper straws in Seattle. Listen, or... look, you got to think of the sea turtles. I know, but my tongue doesn't care about the sea turtles. No, <laughs> like, it doesn't. It just, Look, it ruins I'm on your side. I'm, I, you have to understand that I'm non-confrontational, and if you have a belief, I will follow it because I don't want a confrontation. <laughs> I I need to work on. I've been like positively confrontational, but because I'm like a 230 pound guy, yeah, uh, the doesn't really change tone and Dude. talk slow like it's Dude. it's not safe for some people so i'm starting yeah. to understand that <laughs> but oh, dude so this is awesome yeah uh I'll, I'll cut us off here so paul yeah. Kil- am i pronouncing it right kilmer yep yeah just like awesome. val kilmer but not that guy <laughs> Awesome. This has been great. Uh, I don't have a name for this or whatever, but I'll probably have a name eventually yeah. and add it in. Maybe even a little song or something. But yeah, um, cool. so Magic Comedy, April 22nd is the thing that I'll at least yeah. plug for you here. And then yeah, we'll. And you, and you could double check that because <laughs> with my luck, I gave you the wrong date but uh no, yeah i think i have it in my head i i remember yeah. i took a screenshot so that i could at least put it in the the video um yeah and then i'll i'll double check and just put another number over if i need to or whatever but yeah, yeah that's um, fine. um yeah i'm joey i go by bobby's cousin marcy on mm-hmm. social media just because it's easier to remember bobby's cousin marcy yeah uh, BCM. <laughs> it's a weird, it's a weird thing. I, it's funny because I worked in marketing for so many years, but then if I lo- if I actually looked at my like comedy stuff, I'd be like, "What yeah. are you doing?" Because I, it's just too much time. It takes too much time yeah. and effort. And I've been like getting to the mics and getting on stage at least. So, um, yeah, yeah. This has been awesome, Paul. Thank you. We do a problem. Have a good day. Yeah, we'll be in touch. See ya. Yep, I'll be here.